truth is that no matter how hardworking you are, no matter how friendly you are, no matter how nice you are to your colleagues, and I would love to add this, no matter where you work, you are bound to come across difficult co-workers who are either jealous, insecure, or full of negativity. And I tell you, this set of workers can drain you mentally and even drag you down in the long run. They can ruin your entire work experience and eventually damage your career. Hello lovelies, you are welcome back to my channel. And if you are new here, my name is Helen and you are on to Helerix World. In today's video, I will be talking about how you can deal with difficult people at your workplace. I decided to make this video because I have an acquaintance who is presently on a sick leave as a result of the ill treatment she was receiving from her co-workers. So if you are presently passing through difficult times, tackling toxic, insecure and jealous co-workers, you are at the right place. Having been there myself, I will be sharing with you the six strategies that worked for me in dealing with such people some few years back. As I said earlier on, I have once worked in an environment where the workers were out for themselves. There was nothing like genuine friendship among them. In fact, there were lots of infighting as well as office gossip and rumors. Honestly, the workplace was very toxic, but sadly enough, we were all stuck there. I couldn't just walk away from that situation immediately, since it takes quite some time to find a new job. So within the period of time that I was in that organization, I was able to develop strategic ways and make several moves to tackle the situation. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. Six strategic ways to tackle toxic, insecure, jealous, and difficult co-workers. Number one, be silent about the situation. Don't share it with other co-workers. I know there is this temptation to want to turn to other co-workers to seek empathy or simply to defend yourself. Or you just want to empty yourself. I understand we are humans. It is normal. But the thing here is that I will not encourage you to narrate what is happening to other colleagues. When it comes to relationship between colleagues, I would like to say that you have to be careful what you share. Co-workers are not family and they are usually not friends. So it is perfectly fine to engage in a purely harmless conversation with a co-worker you trust but when it comes to talking about sensitive issues especially about other co-workers ideally these are not the best set of people to have this type of conversation with because you don't even know who you may be complaining to in the first place who knows the person you are narrating all this ordeal to may be a friend or a partner in crime of the fellow so this discussion could eventually develop into a rumor and you may be termed as an office gossip which may come with its own repercussion. So I will recommend you wait till you get back home to your family and friends before sharing these office um, ordeals, before pouring out your feelings or emotions. The second point is something most of us forget about when we are having issues with a co-worker or, or with other individuals and that is to analyze our behavior and ask ourselves if we have done something that could have provoked this behavior you would need to do a self-reflection to discover what could have led to this misbehavior of this colleague towards you is it that you are becoming less humble than usual towards this person you need to ask yourself if you have become boastful about a promotion you recently got. For instance, it is normal to want to brag a little. 
you must have worked hard to end that promotion. And of course, you deserve to be proud of your achievements. It is something worth celebrating to be recognized by an organization where you work. So you sing and dance rejoicing after such a great news. But guys, I would have recommended that you did this outside the workplace as this could have been what triggered that jealousy. Your actions may have been seen as pride and arrogance. I'm not saying it is wrong to celebrate your promotion in the workplace, but again, that depends on the kind or type of co-workers you have. Now, if you have done a lot of scrutiny on yourself, and discovered that you are not guilty of being arrogant, then this leads us to the next point, number three, which is do not take it personal. What do I mean by this? Some people have their own feelings of inadequacies and underachievement to deal with. And before you know it, they become competitors and haters of those who are diligent and hardworking. As a matter of fact, this set of people usually try very hard to bring successful people down to their own level because your success is a threat to them. So it is not as if you wronged them, rather it is their own insecurities which has brought about such inappropriate behavior towards you. Number four, distancing yourself from the person concerned. The fact that you spend much time with someone every day doesn't mean that you cannot protect yourself from that person. With a toxic fellow, for instance, I would recommend that you intentionally work on dissociating yourself from that person. You just have to create sufficient space and deliberately limit the amount of time you spend with such a fellow. I would suggest you create an emotional distance with this sort of individual. You draw the lines and establish boundaries that must not be crossed. And the person must know where he or she does not have the right to cross. As this will seriously help you to cope with the situation. Even when you must interact with this person, which cannot be ruled out because you work together, you shouldn't be totally open. You have to watch what you say in front of the person because he or she can use it against you. So if you don't give him or her space and time in your life, you will be preserving your mental health because situations like this can take a toll on one's emotion and cause tremendous amount of stress. The fifth action I will recommend you take is to confront the person politely. You have tried all the strategies that we have discussed about and the situation is still persisting. You may have to call the person out and confront him or her privately because you cannot be dying in silence. For how long? That is where you spend probably the greater part of your day. So you have to try as much as possible to make peace reign there in order to create an atmosphere which is conducive for teamwork. And with cooperative team workers, the overall performance of the team will be enhanced. So sometimes hearing from the individual can help matters, but you must do this discreetly because by so doing, you'll be encouraging the person to open up. But if you have taken all these strategies and the atmosphere is still very tense and your work environment is taking a toll on you, you may have no other option other than to move the issue to the next step, which is number six, seeking for help. If the toxic person is still adamant and has not become even abusive, either he or she is bullying or harassing you, then it is time to lay a complaint. You shouldn't allow the person to get away with all this. At this point, it becomes very necessary to talk to the human resources manager about it. 
if the situation is beginning to affect your work performance and your stress levels are mounting or you now start feeling depressed then it is time to get professional help you need to talk to your physician about what you are experiencing at work and if possible you can be referred to a therapist thank you so much for watching this video this far i will appreciate it if you would leave your comments in the comment section below and please do give this video a thumbs up and if you have not yet subscribed to this channel please do so and as well click on the bell notification button so that you can be notified whenever i upload a new video and as always love from hilarious world